Good afternoon. Um, I think I'll get started. Um, my name is Gustavo. I work as a software engineer for Linaro. Um, today, the idea is to share with you um, the results we've got. Um, I've got so far experimenting with um, compilers for tracing and profiling. This is a work I've been doing since the beginning of this year uh, with my colleague, uh, Kevin Townsend. So hence the, the title of my presentation is Leveraging Compiler Code Instrumentation for, for Tracing and Profiling in Zephyr. I'm going to start with a uh, quick anecdote. Um, it was the early uh, 50s and uh, Claude Channel, the uh, mathematician, uh, was in London uh, attending a conference with Alan Turing. And uh, at that time, uh, Alan Turing was working in the University of Manchester in, with the Mark I computer. And uh, he invited Channel to go there and, and check what he was going on. And um, um, Channel uh, asked what Tur Turing was, was doing at that time. And Turing explained that he had a new command uh, which would uh, generate a electric pulse uh, and send it to a loudspeaker and uh, would produce a sound like boop. And uh, Chanel was quite intrigued by that. And uh, Turin uh, continued explaining that the idea was to put that command inside the code, like inside loops. And uh, then the idea was that the, uh, how, the, how fast the loop is will determine the pitch of the sound. And uh, Turin continued to explain that uh, one soon would be get familiar with the sound, and by listening to the sound, uh, one would be able to tell if the program uh, hung up or uh, was suspended more in a certain loop or not. So I think this is quite interesting because this is pretty much uh, one of the most accounts I know about somebody trying to trace uh, uh, the program being executed. So. Uh, from that as well, we, you can see that tracing was uh, very important since the um, uh, early back in, in back in the early days of computing, and it continues to be important nowadays because, of course, the systems got uh, much more complex now. So tracing profiling is a kind of dynamic analysis uh, which is performed at runtime. Uh, this is why uh, this is a very interesting because in theory we can capture. Um, almost the, the state of the system very close to the state, uh, I state in real life or in production conditions. Um, how, uh, nonetheless, they can cause, uh, to use a term uh, taken from physics, a sort of uh, observer effect, which means that when you trace and profile, profile the code, you also affect the, the runtime, and uh, so you change the, uh, you affect the, the measures as well. However, if uh, we understand well the, the properties of the system and the disturbances, uh, it's possible to, um, uh, so the, 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 the disturbance will be negligible. So Zephyr, um, given the importance of tracing profiling, Zephyr um, have many options for uh, tracing currently for tracing profiling. However, what was the motivation for using compilers and um, um, trying to make, uh, trying to profile um, using the, the features from a, com uh, a compiler? The idea was that um, we would like to um, make people trace and profile without any financial or licensing barrier. Uh, so make it more democratic so people don't depend on additional hardware, for instance, or prop proprietary or expensive tooling and software like J-Link. Uh, we do also have, for instance, GProf, uh, which runs in some platforms uh, in Zephyr, uh, but it just runs on na native POSIX, a native POSIX 64, and uh, it's a, a little bit uh, tricky to get the timestamps in those platforms, so you're not able to use GProf in uh, real physical boards. And uh, also we have the tracing uh, subsystem already in, in, in th there is a tracing subsystem in Zephyr. However, uh, with that new system, we would like to show at a very low level 
the execution of all the functions which are called uh, in kernel and in application code and uh, when exactly uh, the functions are called, uh, which is possible with this um, uh, when you use the instrument code instrumentation um, uh, in, in compilers, which, prov uh, which, which the compilers provide. Um, so it's a little bit different from what the current tracing system provides, which based it on hooks inserted on certain parts of the code. And the, the, the final reason, which is a quite personal one, uh, is that um, I missed uh, a command line tool for tracing profiling like we have in, in Linux, like perf and ftrace for tracing the functions in the kernel. So given that um, compilers, given that, um, so we, compilers already, it turns out that compilers like GCC and Clang already provide uh, several um, code instrumentation features. For instance, to, for code coverage analysis where you, you, if you enable that flag, you can instrument or your code and, and you can, for instance, for a given set of inputs, you can see for a given input which functions are called. So you, you can um, see what part of the code is exercised. This is important, for instance, for testing. We have also flags in, in those compilers for profile-guided guided optimizations, which uh, in, when you turn on the, those flags, you, it will generate, like for instance in, in GCC, a binary which you run, and uh, it will collect information, profiling information, and uh, about the functions, um, probably hotspots in, in, in the code, given a uh, input, so it's important to have a meaningful input in that case, which is close to what you um, intend to run in production. Um, and, the, and once you run that uh, code, that the binary, it will, generate, uh, it will generate profile information. And uh, once you, you can recompile that code, and um, it will take into account that profile information and will try to optimize uh, those functions which are in the crit critical path. And also we, we have flags for uh, runtime checks, like for checking out of bound access in arrays, for checking new, new pointers, and for checking, for instance, the canaries, the, the stack, for checking the stack, so uh, the canaries um, not sure if everybody knows, but the canaries are a sort of a signature that is put in, in the stack and uh, the compiler generates uh, additional code for checking that, uh, that, that signature and if it's spoiled, it probably means that somebody tried to attack the, the, the program uh, using a uh, smashing the stack um, attack, for instance, so it will abort. Uh, and finally, they provide um, flags for collecting profiling statistics, statistics which can, we can pretty much leverage for tracing profiling. So um, one of the things, um, one of, there are two set, set of flags which are interesting here. The first one is the instrument functions and the associated, uh, it's associated flags for excluding um, files and functions from being instrumented. There is another, another function, another flag, uh, which is just a, a, a available in Clang. Uh, we will talk about it um, in, uh, later. Um, and the second uh, set of flags uh, is the patchable function entry. So um, just thinking of the, the first set, the F, in, in, F instrument functions uh, flag in GCC will pretty much add a hook at the entry and at the exit of every function and call uh, a, hand, a sort of handler for that specific in, in, in all the functions. So with that mechanism, one can use, uh, leverage it for designing a tracing, profiling and tracing system because, um, sorry, I forgot to mention that the signature of the functions uh, take um, the arguments are, which are passed to the functions is the function address and the call site. So the call site 
when a function is, is uh, when a function is called the, the ho hooker, uh, a hook will be called, and uh, the the arguments given will be the fun it's the function on, on address and the where it the address of where it was called from. So with that that thing in place, we can um, on top of it kind of design a system uh, for tracing profiling. And uh, we decided to uh, use for the tracing a ring buffer with two working modes. One working mode is just a trace buffer. Uh, and uh, once it gets full, it stops tracing. And the other working mode is like a ring buffer. So you can uh, keep rec recording events and, but the, the, the oldest ones will be discarded, and the, we just keep the, the newest ones. So pretty much like a uh, ring buffer. And uh, also we um, kind of introduce it or play a, a little bit with that concept, which is kind of taken from the compiler world, which, which is event type promotion, which means that if you can note that that kind of instrumentation just provides you um, the information of entering and exiting or returning from a function. However, uh, for tracing, and uh, it is important, for instance, especially in Zephyr, to know context switches, for instance. So the idea is that um, we, ju we just have the information of entering and exiting a function. However, given the context where we are, we can promote that event to a different event, for instance, uh, based it on the, the name of the function or the state of the kernel or the, even uh, the state of the machine. We can promote that to different events. So this is pretty much the case of the uh, uh, contact switch events, which I will show uh, in a bit. And the, also the profiling, which is currently is, is, is very simple. There is just, an, uh, the buffer is just an array which will keep the accumulators. So when a, a function is, is called, we track the time, we save the time stamp for when we call that function. And when the function returns, we just uh, compute the delta value uh, for the time, and we accumulate that per function. And uh, currently, you can set um, the, the size of the both arrays in kconfig. But uh, for the profiling, like uh, it, it is possible to use more um, interesting heuristics to discard the functions in free space. For instance, maybe you can tell um, what uh, function is important. And uh, so if there is no space, the other ones w w which, which are not in the list will be discarded. Because the, the functions are discovered uh, for profiling uh, as in the, in the execution flow. And we add that to, to, to the array and, uh, comp and compute the, the delta time, time stamp, the delta time. Um, as you can imagine, it, the, the amount of events generated in that uh, situation, for, especially for tracing, is, is large. And uh, there are a few ways to play with that and try to or work around, um, which is um, the first one, which is kind of obvious, is to increase the size of the buffer. Uh, but it depends on your board. So maybe the board, the board is, is, uh, has not much uh, RAM memory, so it depends on the case. So you can increase that to try to fill more traces inside the, that buffer. I, I should mention that uh, so far we have just um, um, experimented with asynchronous transfer, which means that we keep data in the, the tracing buffer, um, and then uh, later, probably, in that, and that's the case, uh, just when the, the, the program stops running, we collect the data. But uh, we, we would like to experiment something synchronous, which will, uh, with uh, different uh, channels like using USB and Ethernet. So anyways, uh, at, but uh, besides increasing the size of the buffer, it's possible to uh, tune the trace, the trace points. Uh, one way to do that um, is at runtime. The other way is at uh, compile time. So the idea is that uh, at runtime we have a trigger and a stop address, uh, which is uh, basically 
uh, when the, when you set the trigger is a function address. So when that function is called, the instrumentation since system gets enabled. And uh, the stop address is another function address that when that function returns, the instrumentation stops. So with that, you can set a region for, for tracing, which can be larger or you can shrink based on your knowledge about the code uh, to reduce the number of events. And uh, those, the trigger and stopper uh, addresses are kept in the RAM. So uh, they survive um, when you reboot the system. They are they survived a reboot. This is important. Will be uh, clear later uh, why. But um, anyways, you can set the trace point using the trigger and the stopper uh, at runtime. So um, another way, which is the, at compile time, is that it might be the case that even set in a small region, the tracing is getting too much. Um, like for instance, in the AST board, very low level functions will start with LL underline. And that is, m might be not interesting for you. We will generate noise and the events will be tracked in, bu in the buffer. So at compile time, it's possible to specify a prefix or even an entire compiler unit like a, a .c source file uh, to be excluded from being, from, from being instrumented. And uh, so you can reduce the noise or reduce the number, again, the number of events uh, tracked because you are not interested in that and they are just noise. So with those two approaches of uh, setting the tracing points at runtime and setting the exclude list, which can be passed by the to west at compile time using dash uh, d c make underline c underline flags, um, you, you can reduce the amount of uh, trace events to fit inside the buffer. And um, so this is for the user. Internally, we do have other ways to uh, disable at compile, both at, at, at comp compile time and at runtime, the instrumentation as well, but users will not touch that. So I'm, it's just mentioned for completeness here, but uh, it's also possible to avoid instrumenting the functions using a, a, compiler, a compiler attribute. In that case, will be uh, you put that per function, and uh, you uh, use the attribute, attribute keyword uh, no instrument function, and it will not instrument a given function. Function we use that pretty much inside the instrument subsystem itself because it cannot instrument itself. It will cause a kind of uh, it will cause recursion and uh, it will not work. So, uh, and also at runtime, uh, at runtime we disable that because um, um, once in the handler, so the, the, the hook is called and we go to the handler to collect the trace and profile information. We need to disable that also to avoid recursion. So this, but this is just a, used internally. Users will not touch that. So, and, uh, the profiling will happen automatically once you set the trace points. So once you set like the region you want to uh, trace, the profiling data will be collected automatically. Um, the data transport, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is asynchronous, um, still synchronous. That's what we have experimented with. Um, so it's we are using the serial, but we do want to um, experiment both with asynchronous and synchronous mode with uh, different different channels like uh, for ARM, uh, the SWWD um, pro protocol uh, and uh, also USB and uh, Ethernet uh, which are widely available and uh, um, has a better, a wider bandwidth. So uh, how do we, we enable the Subsist, uh, the instrumentation subsystem, quite simple. You just need to uh, add a config to your uh, pproject.conf. Uh, so we, you're gonna use config underline instrumentation equals yes, and uh, set the main stack size. Uh, this is mainly, this is an initial experimental guess uh, because of the, the ring buffer uh, functions and and that kind of stuff, uh, and uh, maybe we, we can change, that's too much. But um, anyways, basically that. 
For the retained mem mutexes and, and retention mutexes, this is uh, going to disappear. There is a patch upstream being reviewed right now, which will um, allow us to um, disable the mutexes in the, in the subsystem uh, kconfig, because that's not possible. So there is a, a patch being reviewed. Um, and uh, the, reta the retention, mem retention memory is important because uh, we keep the, the, the trigger and the stopper addresses in the RAM, and that they need to survive the reboot because we set them, then we reboot the system, then the, the, the instrumentation system will kick in and collect the tracing profile information. That's the, 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 the flow. And uh, we, need, you, 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 we can't use mutexes there because the instrumentation system will track functions quite early in the boot. Uh, so there isn't a thread context, so um, it's not possible to use those mutaxes. It will crash the system. And uh, and the second thing you need to provide are pretty much the an overlay device a device tree for your board. I, I used the ST585U board, uh, so there is already a overlay uh, for it. But it's quite simple to add for other, other boards. And uh, this overlay is just to um, free some memory for the retention memory. And this is just a quick example here, uh, just to explain quickly what, what, uh, how that uh, device tree node is specify, specified. So here below, you are pretty much getting the the RAM available in the, for the board and shrinking it a little bit, leaving a space at the end. In this case, we have 32 bytes at the end, which are left for the retention memory. And the, then you, you need to define a re retention node, a retained mem, retained mem node, and then a retention one, which will um, where you you're going to specify that the 32 bytes at the end which will not be overridden by a Zephyr when it reboots, so because it will be used by the retention subsystem. So that's it. That's uh, all you need to enable the, the uh, instrumentation subsystem. So uh, if everything works, uh, you, you, are, you just recompile your application and it's ready to be traced and profiled. Uh, we um, introduced a command line interface tool. We call it Zeru. Uh, for the lack of a better option, um, Z Z uh, we thought of zipperf at, at first, but uh, zipperf was taken, and also just perf is just profiling, and uh, but it, it also is about uh, uh, tracing. So we we decide to pick something randomly, and uh, zaru is uh, basically uh, the translation is a Japanese word would be strainer or, or tool used to filter out or drain water, for instance. And uh, this is because of Zaru's soba, which is um, a dish, usually served uh, chilled. And uh, this is why, uh, the reason is for why Japanese, because uh, Kevin and I, we pretty much love Japanese food. <laughs> so we, and it starts with Z. What? So let, let's remove that. I'm open for other suggestions. So, no. <laughs> I love that. Anyways, <laughs> so, uh, and it starts with Z. That's, that's the main reason, actually. Um, and the, the, the command line tool is written in Python. Um, it uses the, um, it uses the uh, library Babel trace 2, uh, which has a Python tree bindings. I'm not sure if I forget to mention Oh, I skipped one slide actually because, um, sorry about that. It's just, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, before the, the command line interface tool actually we use a, uh, the common trace, for, um, trace format to decode the binary because once you tra transfer the, the data from the buffer down to the host, you need to decode that binary with the traces, with the events. And uh, for that, we use the common trace format, which has a, a, a DSL, domain-specific sp language. Uh, and the parser for that is implemented in the libbabel trace and has Python 3 bind bindings. 
and uh, we, we found some issues using the 1.8 specification, which is we, if we have, for instance, uh, the, a 32-bit architecture and a 64-bit architecture, so f we will need to, to have a metadata for each architecture. It's not possible. It, the, the, the specification is not flexible enough to specify in a single file uh, that based on a given field, uh, other fields will be dif uh, have different sizes. So this is a, something which uh, has been addressed in the 2.0 specification, which actually is, using, uh, uh, is, is not using the DSL anymore. Uh, it's using uh, JSON objects to um, to model the the binary, um, so, but it's not implemented yet. It's a work in progress, so it's not available to, available to to be used. So we are currently using the 1.8, which requires that metadata uh, file one per architecture or even for engines. So if you were uh, we if you have and in this as well, uh, you need yet another metadata, and you you need to take care of it. So you you we need to maintain many metadata files, which is annoying. Um, back to the command line interface. So uh, the the command line interface pretty much uses the Python bindings for the libbebel from libbebel trace to trace, and uh, currently we have uh, two commands, or if you will, sub commands. Um, available, which is the status to get the status from the system to tell if the profiling or the tracing uh, uh, parts are enabled. The idea is that you can you can disable them uh, individually. We have the reboot command, which um, will reboot the system, but uh, it's also in place a sort of ping. So it will reboot the system and it will ping to see if the the system uh, came up correctly. Uh, if not, it will complain. And the, the, the subcommand trace and profile. The trace one is pretty much the, co the command uh, to, to set the, the, the region you want to trace, so to set the trigger and the stop addresses. Uh, it doesn't take the address, so you, you, you don't need to, um, to uh, remember or inspect the L file to, uh, to find out the, the the address of a given symbol. It, it can, you just uh, put the name of the function and it will inspect the L file in the Zephyr image and uh, it, will, it, will attack, it will set the uh, address for the, the trigger and the stopper functions correctly. And uh, finally, the profile, which is used to um, the code, to extract and decode the profiling uh, data in the buffer. And the idea was to have a command line interface which uh, produces, um, which uh, give us the, the traces and the profile information in the command line in the text format, but also have sort of backends or plugins which will allow uh, us to export the traces to other uh, GUIs, for instance, um, or even for a PDF file. And uh, we uh, for data visualization, that's that's the reason. And uh, we decided to experiment with the Perfetto uh, GUI. Uh, this is a tool uh, used to, a lot in in the context of Android. And um, the I have a an example here for the uh, the Perfetto output. And uh, I think one thing important to, to mention about Perfetto that we found is that for generating the context switch events or for displaying them in Perfetto, um, the, the Perfetto specification, it's a JSON file. Nonetheless, the switch information is taken as is uh, from the ftrace system in Linux, and we don't have that in Zephyr. So currently, we are kind of faking building a, uh, a ftrace-like um, event just for uh, displaying it in Perfetto. So ideally, the, the Perfetto specification uh, or the format uh, taken as input in Perfetto should have a platform agnostic way to specify context switches, but there isn't, so we are pretty much like faking the F trace, a F trace event out of the uh, kernel 
uh, contact switch events in Zephyr. And uh, the contact switch so you can see here in the inside the, 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 bo the yellow box. And uh, here we are tracing a program which is in the samples in, in, in we, we have a sample for the instrumentation subsystem and the sample pretty much is a, a kind of ping pong uh, program um, which runs we take turns uh, executing an idle loop in a single CPU and uh, here you see the main the main thread and the other thread being created and the uh, which were created, and at the tip of the, the red arrows, uh, you see the state of each uh, thread. Uh, the red one is running, not sure if it's possible to see, and the, and the purple one uh, is stopped. Uh, the one which is running, you can see that uh, it's a sort of a flame graph upside down, um, and that's what actually by an, another idea had uh, Kevin had, which was to uh, bring um, a kind of a flame graph analysis to Zephyr, uh, pretty much as we have in, in, in Perf and Linux. So anyways, this is the, uh, just an example of a uh, graphic user interface or data visualization for the traces. And uh, which shows a contact switch with, with two, two two threads. Uh, now, uh, what is the impact of turning on instrumentation subsystem? Um, we used the GCC compiler, which is supported by Zephyr. Um, and uh, you can see that, that the number of functions, I, I just used the samples under the, the basic, sam dash samples, dash, dash basic um, applications there. Uh, to, to plot this, this chart. And uh, as you can see, the, the, the number of functions increase uh, more than twice. And the, the reason is that the flag instrument functions um, forbids inlining. And uh, as it forbids inlining, uh, further optimization like dead code elimination, tail call elimination will not um, take place. So it's, it's, it's preventing uh, the compiler to do further optimizations, which are important. Um, so the, the number, the jump of the number, the, the jump on the number of functions here is because no inline has been performed by the compiler. And uh, it reflects in the, in the size of the final image, which is also twice, more than twice, actually. Um, in comparison to when you're switched off the system. And uh, if you compare with the uh, config debug, the situation doesn't improve because there isn't much difference when you turn on um, the config debug. Uh, however, I put a, a current impact on turning on the instrumentation subsystem. Why current? Because uh, Clang do have a flag to allow in inlining when you use the instrumentation functions flag. The thing is that GCC d does not support, so we are hoping that with Clang, or with, if that get, um, there was an uh, issue opened in GCC for fi fixing or adding that to, uh, in, in GCC. Uh, so we hope that it will improve the situation regarding the, the image size. So uh, all I have mentioned so far is uh, published um, as a uh, request for a comment. So feel free to go there and comment everything. Uh, change the, the, the name of the command line um, tool, everything. Now that we know that Kevin doesn't like that much Japanese food. <laughs> yeah, we can put some Italian or Thai. <laughs> So anyways, please comment there. Um, and there is, uh, I, I promised a, 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 a demo in, in the description of the presentation. The demo, uh, there is a video attached to the, to the RFC, please go there. There isn't enough time to uh, go through the demo, but uh, I recorded a video there, which is the uh, zero in place, uh, collecting the trace and profiling there. And um, also exporting to Perfero. There is also a screenshot of Perfetto, the same one I, I've I have shown you. Um, yeah. 
Uh, okay, so I so far was uh, just about the, the first set of flags, but I mentioned there was a second um, set of flags which might be interesting as well. And um, why those flags are interesting? Because if you um, you could imagine it that in in the in the in that system where all or a bunch of functions are instrumented, and uh, you have to match. Uh, you, you, we need to verify if the function is the trigger or the stopper to, to turn on and turn off instrumentation. You, you, you have to compare, you, you, you're gonna compare for every function, uh, you, you're gonna make a compare and decide to return or to call the hook. This might imply some overhead. We haven't measured measure how much this, this overhead is but it's possible to measure as well. We, we will probably. But anyways, we can imagine that there is a, a overhead. And uh, for uh, working around this overhead, we can use that uh, second set of instructions, uh, which is the uh, patchable function entry, which pretty much will add at the prologue of the functions a bunch of no ops, nopes at the beginning of the function. And um, we're gonna also have to use no optimized siblings, siblings call uh, for reasons which will be, um, uh, we'll mention a little bit later in the next slide probably. But anyways, that flag, flag will add the knobs, which means that we can start to play with the dynamic function instrumentation, which is uh, quite interesting. It, this is quite experimental. Uh, but uh, the idea is that we, we are going to generate the hooks not at compile time, but at runtime entirely. The compile will just uh, put the, the uh, give room, um, add the knobs at the prologue of the functions, and we, we are going to, to add the hooks for the, just the functions we are interested in and uh, at runtime, pretty much like a JIT engine um, or compiler will do. And um, this uh, will, so the checks, uh, as we had before in the system with the instrumentation, in, instrument, instrument functions, we're not, um, uh, we will not have that overhead. However, there is a, so, some comps, and uh, the thing is that you, you're, you will have to um, have a sort of Mac assembler there in place because you need to generate the the, the uh, instructions in the prologue at runtime. And uh, also, um, with that function, we are just patching the entry of the function. We are not patching the exit of the function. And so, it means that we need to tw tweak the stack and the return addre address in the stack to, um, uh, to allow us to return properly to the hook. And the other thing is that code relocation um, is necessary. So you cannot patch the, a program running in the flash. So it depends on your board, uh, it will be restricted. Uh, the, the amount of code you can uh, use that feature. Uh, and another thing is that it still prevents um, optimizations. Uh, that flag and uh, no siblings, uh, that flag, no optimized si siblings call is pretty much um, to avoid tail call elimination because we need, you cannot, may cannot, th the thing is that with that uh, dynamic function instrumentation, uh, all main calls A, A calls B functions. Uh, with uh, tail call elimination, B can return directly to main, but we, we want actually that it will always return to A function and A function to main. So here is just a kind of, um, I'm about to finish, just to ex ex uh, an example of what we've done. Uh, we implemented sort of um, assembler inside the code and um, uh, to test it, it and which will, uh, we have here a simple F uh, function which uh, the compiler will add. I exaggerated it, it's not necessary to be that, that size of course. And uh, uh, this is the F function without being patched and here is an example with the F function patched. 
uh, adding the hooks. So this function f now will call a hook at, at its entry and when it returns, because we are man manipulating the stack here as well. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to mention um, that uh, yesterday I thought uh, there is another possibility uh, which will uh, reduce the cons uh, of this approach, which is we can generate it, all this code at the host side and transfer the, the data to the target, pretty much as the eBPF does. When you compile, for those which know uh, the eBPF in Linux, uh, of course the eBPF has a, G, uh, has a VM in the kernel side to um, decode uh, the instructions and JIT the instructions. Uh, however, uh, inspired with that, uh, we can move that part um, of uh, uh, having a um, assembler to by using the, the, the Zephyr's one two chain. Um, and uh, I guess that's pretty much it. We are on top of the hour. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot, folks.